let's have a look at how our project is set up for compile time annotation. This is our main, this is our main project. This is our main app that targets our Android app. This is our annotation package that only contains annotation and some code for our runtime annotation. Generally, we will we will declare a separate package for our compile time annotation. For 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 current example, we I have just declared it both of these things the the runtime processor and runtime annotation here. Uh, it there is no specific name for the runtime annotation processor. I'm just calling it because I like it too. So yeah, these two has have to be ignored right now. The main focus is here. The annotation, or uh, our compile time annotation is declared here, uh, as we have discussed earlier. Uh, the retention policy source so that it's only available till the compilation and then discarded because we are not using it afterwards. It has to be supported on the class, so it is type. Uh, and let's see what's what how we are going to accomplish the code generation task. Now, for processor, we are going to have a separate module for processor. So whenever we include this dependency using Gradle, we have annotation dependency for our annotation, and we have processor dependency for our processor. So when the project is built, it only includes these dependencies, these dependency, which are which starts from implementation and not the processor. Since the processor will already had done it, done its work before the compilation, how it has done its work that we have to see. For that purpose, we have we've declared a processor module. Let's see how the, the things are shaping up in that module. Now, since processor needs uh, to know which which annotation it's working with, and that annotation is declared in separate module we have to declare a dependency for annotation module in our processor too. Other things we are using, we will be using is that uh, this library, Kawawa, for some util methods, and the main library for code generation is Java Poet. Uh, we have to mention this processor module targets Java 8, so that we have to, we can use some Java 8 features. Next thing is, where our processor, processor class is Declaring. Uh, this processor class is declared in, in Java, Java package, Java source package, main package. And the thing I mentioned uh, from the slides earlier about the, the meta info is declared here. So you have to manually create a resource directory, then a meta inf directory, then do, uh, services directory. In that in, in this directory you have to you have to create a file named javits.annotation.processing.processor uh, in which you have to provide the name of your processor class with qualified by the package name. Once you declare this uh, this this uh, this metadata, whenever you click the build on on your IDE, the the the, the ID will, will search for annotations that this processor supports, and it will, it will give you the objects which are annotated by that annotation at compile time. So you, get, you can perform code generation based on that. So let's have a look at, at our, app, our processor class. Now, what we're doing here is that we are extending the abstract processor of Java. Here, a class and a class type annotation, which is called supported annotation types, is mentioning which annotation we will be using to mark those objects. Basically, this annotation is just targeting the, just marking the objects on which we will target. So there are just bookmarks or marker in the programming which which will flag the objects on which we will be performing some operations. Uh, we have some constants here. We have a fragment package constant, and we have a class name as discussed earlier. This is how we initialize class. 
we define this package name and we define the class name. So whenever you use this class name in generated code, it will auto import, it will, it will generate the code with import statement automatically. We have a messenger object, we has we have an element object that, that will be that will be initialized by the element utils. We have a filer object that will be used to write down the code into the files. Now, first thing is we override the init method to to get references in these three objects. What processing environment is compiler provides you with the current processing environment. Uh, you get messenger from it to send messages, errors, or informations to the IDE in case of any any error. You get the element utils reference from the processing environment and you get the file reference when finally you, you get to write the file, files. Next thing is uh, we have process method. We will get to the process method later. First, we have to look into some of other two methods which are, which are really small methods. What is the supported source version? Uh, here we have called latest supported. So it will get the latest supported version that is installed in the system. By default, the version is six. So if you do not override this method, you will get, a, uh, get an error that, that a version is six or something like that. So yeah, now this this another method that tells the compiler to what annotation it will support is that instance dot class dot get canonical name. So this is this is annotation on on which we will be working with. So objects marked with this annotation will receive a special treatment. We'll receive some extra code generated. So finally, we get into the process method. What process method gives us is is the, the environment and uh, element set. So in, we, we could also use the the type element set on which the the annotations were marked with. But right now, just for the sake of example, to to keep things simple, we we I'm I'm going to use this environment to get the elements that are annotated with class. In that way, I can I can perform a filter directly here. So yeah, that's that's basically the same thing. So so here I am looping to looping on all the elements that are that are annotated with this instance annotation. This instance annotation marks those objects, marks those class definitions in our case fragment classes to provide them an extra method an extra code to to use again and again to use it and instead of writing it again and again so so what my findings were uh, that i cannot write write i cannot modify the class itself using java Quiz. So what I had to do is that to 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 create a new class based on on the class on which instance was set, instance annotation was used, and create a new class. For example, if I have a blank fragment, then I will create a class called blank blank fragment instance. Uh, we'll see that later. Uh, let's go step by step here. So each element which is annotated by instance annotation will be looped through. Each element has to be a class type because we are working with the fragment classes. If it is not a class type, we will send an error message to the IDE that element should be class type. It ha the message has to be meaningful so that it can be traced into the source file. So I have written this message here. Element dot get kind dot name will return me the name of exact class that you are applying annotation to. So if you are applying annotation to a wrong class, you will know the name by here. Uh, element dot. Sorry, this is actually the the ex, the parent class, and this is the the target class. So. So uh, I want to want to mention here that we only are targeting classes that extend from the fragments v4 set fragment fragments. So if your class is not v4 fragment, we will not generate instance uh, 
class and a get method for you. So this is our rule for this example. Your, your class has to be a v4 fragment class. So you will get an instance uh, dot get method or else you, you will not get them that thing. So we are, we are performing that check at, at compile time. And this is the these are the messages that you will see uh, at compile time if, if any error occurred. Coming back to the initial check of class, uh, if, if, if it is a class type, then we move on further that the found element was class, now proceed. Uh, I need to get the type element, that what kind of uh, class that was. So if that class was a v4 fragment class, uh, was not the v4 fragment class, then we throw the error that they, they, our, our, our annotation is only supporting v4 fragment class. Uh, now, if even if this check is passed, then we will only proceed to final code generation. Our our annotation, our our target on which annotation is applied has to be class, and it has to be fragment class, v4 fragment class. Then we generate code for you. Now, what we what we are doing here, we get getting the package name here to to use it later for the for the gen, for generating class. When we generate class, we will we'll, we'll put that class into this package. So if, if your fragment, let's say blank fragment is our fragment and it, it belongs to a main source package. So we will, we will put the, the generated class also in the main source package. The only difference would be it will be in the build folder rather than in the main folder, rather than in the fo source folder. So package name we get from element utils. Uh, we call get package of and element. Uh, by the way, these these things will you you can see the the document references of of these classes, how to use them, and some some tutorials. Uh, also, this this whole code will be available on GitHub, so you can download it, play with it, and do whatever things you would like to do with it, test it, and and experiment with it. That, now that we have got the package where we where, where our class will belong to. Now we have to define what our class will be. So as discussed earlier, as uh, Java Poet uh, supplies us with the type spec builder, uh, we, will, we will use this type spec builder to, to specify a class. We can specify interface, we can specify enum. Uh, right now we are generating a class, so we are using type spec builder. What we'll do is, is we call class builder and we take the name of the element on which the instance annotation was applied to. So in case of blank fragment, we are getting blank fragment here. And we're adding the name, adding the and adding the, the suffix of instance to that class. So our specification tells us that the class to be generated has a name of the class target plus instance. In case of blank fragment, the name would be blank fragment instance and finally we add some modifiers to that class that it will be public it will be final because there is no need to modify a class that is in the build folder next thing is we define a class name ref specification for fragment so this processor doesn't know what a fragment class is so we get a fragment class of that type which on which the annotation was applied. Let's say we want to uh, we want to instantiate the blank fragment object. So we need to uh, import the blank fragment package so that we can use that class to to instance to in, in, to in, 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 in instantiate. So this class name specifies the current package we're sitting on and the element the name. The current package is the package where our target resides, our blank fragment re resides. And this, this string is the name of the class, the name of our blank fragment. So whenever I use class name of class fragment object in code generation, it will use our blank fragment. It may look a bit tricky, uh, maybe a lot, a, lot, a lot more tricky, but uh, going through a couple of examples and practices, you will get to know that how Java works. 
uh, right now uh, I'm just just going too fast maybe but I have written a couple of libraries on using these so uh, I, I, not, I don't find it more very hard to to be honest and you'll get used to it too so class theme is used where you want to use a class that is not purely Java but you want to use it in your generated code so that when the code is generated the import statements are are used correctly next thing is we have we have described our how our class look like uh, we have described uh, an object we will, which, which we will use this is this is basically the reference of, of the target object of the target class on which the annotation is present so that when we instantiate we, we get a reference to it properly next thing is we we do, we provide a method we, we we declare a class we declare a method now for declaring a method we we call a method specification called method spec method spec and we call it method builder we add modifiers public static we add parameter class bundle and bundle this class bundle as mentioned earlier is, is the class name reference of the class bundle that resides in Android framework. Uh, this is the package and this is the class name. So this Java processor does not know what a bundle is. So this is the way to tell it that how it will include a class bundle with correct import statement when the code is generated. Now this is the method signature. This this is the method signature here. Uh, it tells the name the modifiers and and the parameters this is the parameter type and this is the parameter name and this method returns class fragment this method will return the target itself for example if this annotation is applied on the blank fragment this method will return an instance of a blank fragment and how the generated code will know that it is a blank fragment it will know from here because this annotation was applied to blank fragment this class name specifies its package and name. So here we pro provide it with the class name object, class name reference of class fragment, which our target is. This is pretty much the first line of any method we declare in our code. This is equivalent to public static get and public static fragment get fragments get and the parameter we'll see it uh, when it generates so yeah now it's time to generate code these lines add statements are the real statements which are going to be generated by the class by our our processor so dollar sign t fragment equals to new dollar sign t this t is called type literal in java poet when we want to use a class type in our code generation, we specify it by dollar sign t, and then provide the arguments so that when the code is generated, it will use the correct import statement and the correct class types with the in, in place of these uh, string literals. Second thing is string symbols. So second thing is uh, first a statement will in our case, we'll generate blank fragment, fragment equals to new blank fragment. Now, in, a, in Android, it's a, a common practice to provide some data to the fragments in, in, in form of bundle arguments. So if the user has provided any uh, uh, bundle argument, we will call, we'll write another statement fragment dot set argument and bundle that was provided us by the parameter. Notice that we're not using semi, semicolon here because uh, Java Pit will automatically add those when writing the statement. Now, as a last statement of the method, we will return the fragment that we that we created. Finally, when our method specification is completed, we will add this method specification to our class specification that we pro, that we did describe earlier. So the class specification is complete. The method specification is complete. Now it is, it is ready to be written on a file. So we have a Java file builder that gets package where the file is to be written and the class specification instance. 
we had class specification here, we build it and we pass it here to the Java filer. Once the Java filer is built, we called the write to method with the Java with, with the filer in reference that we got earlier. So we tell the Java place to write this class in this package using this filer. And this filer holds the current environment setup. So what we did here is that we loop through all the elements which were annotated by instance. We perform some checks. We we got the package of that class where it was residing. We started a class specification. We we got the class reference, class uh, class name reference of the target, so that we could use this in code generation. We provided a method specification. Uh, we provided method signatures here, parameters here, and return type here. We added three statements, which were using Java code convention. And the, the type was the target at, on which the annotation was applied, which you got from here, here. And finally, we returned that object by creating an instance of it. And then when the method specification was completed, we provided that method to our class specification. And when the class specification was completed, we provided that class specification to Java file dot builder instance by from the Java Poet library. We provided where the class will be generated. We provided what class will be generated. And we provided a filer instance of the current environment to be written. So this is pretty much it. And let's see what happens. Uh, when we when we build the project, let's say we build the project. By the way, uh, this this is used in this package here in the in, on the blank fragment. So most likely the method we will be calling is the blank fragment instance dot get method. So our build is running. Let's see uh, what class it generates. So the build, build is completed. So if I am to write blank fragment instance, here it is. The, well, well, just to make sure that this class was not present earlier, uh, let us clean the projects. Okay, so when we clean, when I clean the project, it will clear all the build folders. So the generated files will be, will be deleted. So let's wait for the project to be cleaned up then we will, we, will, we will verify that the, that class never existed. So the clean is completed. I call it blank fragment. You can see that there is no blank fragment instance here. So I will build a project. I will build a project. The compiler will come here and see this annotation. It will, it will provide this, this class data to our, our processor. Well, this is, this is very fast, so yeah, you have to bear with me. So that instance will, that instance, the compiler will provide those target classes to here in the process method. We will perform all our code generation and we'll get the generated code here. So blank fragment, annotation, code generation here. And let's see if we get here now, just it's slowly building. Now it's build is complete. I can write blank fragment instance. Here is the class generated dot the method which what which we generated get and I can pass null. Uh, now what we return a blank fragment instance. So let's see if it, it works here. Let's see, yes, it, it it is it is a class and it returns it returns a blank fragment instance. Let's go into the into the source code. So as you can see that uh, it is giving us a warning that files under the build folder are getting are generate are generated and should not be edited. So this file is generated by our code. You see we had public final class name and we we just did this blank fragment plus instance name which, which provided it with this name. 
we created a, a method specification with a static method. Uh, we provided the return type as the target type, and our target was blank fragment. We we set the method name as gets. We provided a bundle parameter. The first line was t fragment equals new t, and the t was a type, the class type. In our case, it was a blank fragment. Next was next up was the fragment of set arguments as it is the statement, and the last statement was return fragment. So. So here is our, our whole generated class, and we can call it, we can use this blank fragment reference. Uh, let's say we can do, no, we cannot create it. We can, we can pass it to get support fragment manager dot dot begin transaction dot add zero blank fragment. We can do uh, any sort of, of thing you want to do with it and by the way this is not a valid code we need to provide some container for it anyway so just how this is how we generated the, the code one thing I, I forgot to mention in in the slides was when you describe annotation you can also describe which parameter it can use. So for example, in our runtime annotation, if I want it to use some, some, some parameter, we can only use it in a, a primitive type with primitive types and a string type. So let's say if, if you, I want to, want to specify how many objects or how many times I want to initialize it, I can do it in, uh, let's say, uh, initializations and let's say by default i i want at least one initialization so this is how it is used uh and and where it is used we can we can we can pass here let's say initialization equals to three for example if i were to use this i i would i would use reflection to fetch this parameter here. So anyway, you can also add parameters to, to the annotations. That's all from the demo. I hope you understand it. Uh, I hope you understand it well, or at least have some idea on how to write annotations, both runtime and compile time. And, and now you have, a, you have a powerful tool at your disposal to to write more efficient and and reusable and and time saving code for your project if needed